liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Committee of this meeting of the City of Smith Station, Tuesday, April 11, 2023. Thank you so much for those who attended our work session. Uh, we had a conversation with Mr. Captain Green, our, our new captain with our fire forward at CDVB about their one week service. And it's exciting for those two things. We congratulate <coughs> and welcome Captain Green to the City of Smith Station as uh, part of our fire department, uh, our volunteer fire department that is, that is doing great things. And so I'm excited about them being part of that. Thank you, Mr. Green, for doing education and pledge. At this time, I'd like to establish a roll call vote to make sure we have a quorum. Yes, sir. Mr. Stringer? Here. Mr. Jackson? Here. Mr. Lanston? Here. Mr. Cooley? Here. Ms. Green? Here. Mayor Cudmont? Here. You received the minutes from the March 28, 2023 meeting <clears throat> via hard copy as well as digital. Are there any additions to corrections? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Cooley Lanston, thank you. Sir. At this time, I'd like to uh, entertain a motion from the <coughs> Historical Commission. Appointment of Richard Beverly to the Historical Commission serving a term vacated by Tony Corson. Can I get a first and a second? Make the motion we do that. Mr. Lanston? Second. Mr. Green, thank you. Mayor Copeland, I make a motion we just been rules and ordinances and resolutions so that we can address the matter before us tonight. Mr. Cooley has made a motion that we suspend the rules and ordinances so that we can handle business tonight. <coughs> the business tonight um, is deemed that we need to handle it in a very expedient fashion, so therefore we're asking to suspend the rules and actions. Can I get a second from Mr. Cooley? Second. So, a first. <coughs> and do we need a first or a second? He made a motion. Second. Okay. Yes. Any discussion? Okay. I call for the vote. Yes, sir. Mr. Stringer? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Lansing? Yes. Mr. Cooley? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mayor Cooper? Yes. We're going to continue on with our asphalt paving. You know, I, I, I'm going to introduce it to get a first second and I'll follow. So, 2023 508 entered into a contract with Phoenix Paving and Maintenance LLC for asphalt overlay project on Silver Place, Lee Road 854. Can I get a motion a second? Motion approved. Second. Um, I don't understand, and I want to make sure the public hears this, CTV man, thank you for, for filming this. We seem to get completely annihilated on Facebook about asphalt paving, and we're not the only city in, in the region that has problems with asphalt. We have had a lot of water that has fallen in the last four or five years, and anytime you have a torrential downpour, your asphalt is going to come apart, crack, whatever. And uh, Mullen Road, of course, has all those black stripes. That's to keep the water out. And so this is over in Great Acres. This is Susan's place. And we're going to pave over that. It was paved over 60 years ago, and we took over that. So, Mr. Bryce, I want you to answer the question. Yes, sir. We did uh, Cummings Road mm -hmm. 294 That's correct. for a mile, correct? Uh, th three quarters of a mile. What was the price tag on that? $222,000. So $222,000 for quarter of a mile of asphalt. So, yes, we would love to pay every road in the city today, but $220,000 is real money. It's real money. And so I ask you to be patient with us. We're trying to do our best to, to patch holes, make our roads last as long as they possibly can. But if you ride around our region, from Penny City, Columbus, to, to Salem, to Opelika, we're not the only ones that, you know, um, I rode through a road in one of our neighboring cities and knocked the front tooth out a couple weeks ago. But it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty rough, but it's not because we're not trying. It's simply because when water falls, water gets into the asphalt, and if you have a crack and you have a freeze, you all know if water freezes in, 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 in a bottle, that bottle's going to explode, or a Coke or whatever it may be. We've all had it happen in the refrigerator. That's the same scenario that happens on our roads. So be patient. Uh, call the city clerk. Call the mayor's office. And as a speaking slide, let us explain to you what the level of importance is on our roads. Uh, we know that Green Acres is a problem. 
And we know that Susan's place, Susan's road is a, is, a, is, a, is a problem. We know that Donna's place, Donna's road is a problem. We were going to address those. We knew that 294 was a problem. We've addressed that. We know that Mullins Road is a problem and it's going to be on the MPO paving project by 2020, the end 2024. So we understand these things, but it's just not, it can't happen overnight. And so I'm asking you guys to be patient with us. This is road, a lot of people are going to be happy about getting it paid. So be it. But there's going to be other people on the other side of the city that are going to be angry with us because we chose to pave this road, not their road. Be patient. We're doing it at a level of importance. So that's my soapbox, and I apologize. Any other discussion? We're not being brought forth. I call for the vote. Yes, sir. Mr. Trainer? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Lanson? Yes. Mr. Cooley? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mayor Copeland? Yes. That's the man in the room that Chris Lambert showed up tonight, so I'm going to call him to come up front. Stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. B? Yes. Mr. Lambert? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Cooley? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Lambert? Yes. Mr. Cooley? 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 Yes. And fair housing is a big deal, and, and they truly are honest about this, and they care about fair housing. Uh, Chris has been a friend of mine for over 50 years, and, and Ms. B has been a friend of mine for over 10 years, and I thank you for constantly reminding us of what this means, so thank you. April 2023 marks the 55th anniversary of the passage of Title VIII of the Civil Rights of that Act of 1968, commonly known as the Federal Fair Housing Act. And whereas the state of Alabama has prohibited discrimination in housing since 1968, an equal opportunity for all, regardless of race, color, religion, sex, disability, family status, national origin, is a fundamental goal of our nation, city and state. Whereas equal access to housing is an important component of our goal and is a fundamental right to equal education and employment. Whereas housing is a critical component of family and community health and stability. And whereas housing the choice matters and impacts our children's access to education, our ability to seek and retain employment, <coughs> the culture and benefits we enjoy, the extent of our exposure to crime and drugs, the quality of health care we receive in emergencies, and whereas the laws of this nation and our state seek to ensure such equality of choice for all transactions involving housing. And whereas ongoing education, outreach, and monitoring are keys to raising awareness of fair housing, principles and practices, and rights and responsibility. And whereas only through continued cooperation, commitment, and support of all Alabamians can we barriers to fair housing, the barriers to how fair housing be removed. Now therefore, I, the Mayor F.L. Bubba Coleman, along with our City Council, hereby proclaim April 23, 2023, to be Fair Housing Month in the City of Smith Station. Is it birthday? Yeah. Happy 21st Happy birthday, birthday to Miss B. Yes. Sexual Assault Awareness Month campaign is drawing connections 
prevention demands equality, equity, which calls on individuals, communities, organizations, institutions to change the systems that surround us to build equity and respect within our communities and workplace. Whereas rape, sexual assault, and sexual harassment are harm our community. And statistics show that one in six women and one in 33 men will be the victims of attempted rape or rape at some point in their lives. And whereas child abuse prevention must be priority to co confront the reality that one in nine girls and one, one in 53 boys under the age of 18 years old experience sexual abuse or assault at the hands of an adult. And whereas we must work together to educate our community about sexual violence, prevention, supporting survivors, and speaking out against harmful attitudes and actions. And whereas the first step is increasing, increasing education, awareness, and community involvement to create a safer environment for all. Now, now therefore, be it resolved that the City Administration, the City Council, the Mayor, the FL Public Public, nearby claim April 23, 2023, as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in the City Administration. Thank you so much for bringing attention to such a serious cause. Thanks, sir. Let's get out of the way. Let's go to the Okay. At this time, we're entered the public comment section of our meeting. We have Ms. Blanche Moore of 12512 Oaks Drive that would like to come forward and speak with us. Thank you so much, Ms. Blanche. Before you speak, I'd like to remind you of a test form before a public body in each member of the City Council and the City Administration is a public servant. Any false statement made to a public servant for the purpose of acquiring a benefit may be prosecuted as provided in Section 13A10, 109 Code of the State of Alabama, 1965. You're limited to three minutes by the State Code, and thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mayor Cole, Blanche, Mayor Cole, City Councilmen and women. Thank you for allowing me to address you personally today. My name is Blanche Moore. I moved to Smith Station last year, April 2022. I live at 145 12 Oaks Drive, 12 Oaks Subdivision. Upon moving into our new house, it was quite evident that there was a major problem with speeders in our neighborhood. We live on the main road in the subdivision, followed by a blind curb. Our first encounter was with a FedEx driver who was delivering and he came around the blind curb um, at a speed that was alarming. I was outside with my grandchildren playing and unfortunately it rattled me. No doubt I made the complaint with FedEx like I'm supposed to. I usually don't like making complaints. I like to handle things professionally like I'm doing now. By the end of September or so, I had my feeling or my feel of watching people speak in and out of our subdivision. As a result, I called and spoke to your assistant, um, and I'm still learning, so I apologize um, that I don't know names and everything. <laughs> so, um, in the process, it was revealed to me that speed bumps had been previously placed in our subdivision, but then they had been moved due to complaints. Your assistant went on to say that I would need signatures and another approval to have them placed back in the subdivision. But instead, I politely suggested an alternative with kids signs or a flashing speed camera sign, to which your assistant advised he would run it by you, Mayor Copeland, and then call me back after he got your thoughts. A few days later, I received a call back, and he advised that it would take time so on and so forth. I completely understood that. Fast forward, nothing has been placed and I have not received another telephone call or any additional updates. Additionally, our one and only speed limit sign has been removed as of February this year. So, I'm coming to you 
because today, this morning, my fiance was actually mowing the lawn. Another delivery truck came around the blind curb and almost hit him. He was close to the road, trying to mow our lawn. That being said, we're now seven months. I still haven't received anything. I will admit I'm new, a citizen, and still learning the processes over here again. However, I'm far from naive. I've worked on several projects, councils, and other matters to include, but not limited to making sure Marcy's Law was put on the ballot for Georgia to ensure victims' rights were protected. So I'd like to bring that to your okay. attention. Okay, all right. Um, so please, please, please stay there. Yes, sir. Um, uh, the kid signs, I'll have them ordered tomorrow. Okay. Um, and I, we have a family member in there that has a special needs child. And I'll talk to them privately about there's ways that we could have special needs child signs put up, which then in, in even more brings awareness. Um, the reason the speed bump thing come into place, I can't give names as your mayor. <laughs> But we have several people in this city that are not completely there, is the best way I can put it. And so they demand that, that they want this, they want it now. So there's a two-thirds rule in the city. And the two-thirds rule, if you get two-thirds of the signatures of your subdivision to have speed bumps, we have speed bumps sitting back in the office right now. I saw them yesterday. We can do that. But if, if you can get the, the, there's somebody in your neighborhood that's already approached this, and, and he was very belligerent about it, and he did not try to do anything. So I don't mind doing that. However, I will tell you this, and I wish they would not have left, but the value of your home will drop with speed bumps in your subdivision. Gotcha. So remember that. So you'll have that complaint against you. So the best thing to do, we could do signs. And we also have ordered a lighting sign that they have at school. This is what the speed limit sign is. So I'm going to repeat what I heard from you. Kid signs, the speed, speed limit sign, and I don't know where your speed limit sign was. Somebody stole that. It was actually right in front of our house. Okay. Is the pole still there? The pole is still there. Well, somebody stole the sign. Because <laughs> um, we would take the phone off. <laughs> but, uh, kids that play speed limits. Um, so I want to reiterate, I do not, we, if you want speed bumps, get two thirds majority of the signatures. Just get a piece of paper and say petition for go ahead, and speed bumps, and then just go through your neighborhood and get a petition, and we'll do the numbers of people that's in your subdivision. You get a lot of pushback from that. Um, we won't do speed tables. That's out of the question um, because the liability of the city on cars, you know, tear them up. Mm -hmm. um, so. I, I, I hear you 100% and I promise you this will be addressed tomorrow okay. for the kids that play and the, the speed limit sign and, and I will talk to the family about special needs kids that play which kind of hypes the, the, the attention to that. Um, and on her subdivisions, since there's two subdivisions, you know, how Castlewood. that road in Castlewood, does she have to get those two or just literally the 12 Oaks part? I'll, go, I'll be okay with 12 Oaks. I'll be okay with 12 over two thirds, you know, but you're gonna get a lot of pushback because because we did this in a subdivision and we put it down without this was I was naive. I did it. And within two hours, my battery died on the phone and, and my wife's battery died and then it because people were complaining about it. So that's why I said the two thirds majority of, of people. And and, and I and I understand um, we paid 294 Cummings Road, and now it's it's Talladega, and um, and so it's a problem. People just don't care, and so. But I can handle what you're asking me to handle. The kids that play and a new speed limit sign. Thank I think it was 35 of it. Yes, it was 35. 35. Mm -hmm. 25. 25. 25. Oh, okay. And Miss Moore, I was the one you spoke with, and I did pass on the public works department. During that time, they were we had a lot of roads that didn't have posted CB limit signs, so it was a bad. I might make excuses. There was just a lot of signs being ordered and stuff. And I know they got ordered, and they're somewhere our public works building. Um, so it just got lost in the shuffle. But um, if you could, uh, I'll give if you could stay after the meeting. I'll give you my email address, or you can give me your email address, and I'll send you a copy of the petition. It is a two thirds. I have to, you know, once you get everybody to sign that will sign, I have to go. 
compare contrast that with what is in the county tax map system and then if that reaches that two-thirds threshold then I'll drop a resolution of our city attorney and have the council vote on it and if the council approves it then that will be the prompt for our public works department to come put speed bumps and down. To answer your question on the speed bumps we have, we place speed ripples. Yeah. The well, if somebody went out there with a pickaxe mm -hmm. and literally picked, somebody not belonging to us, yep. somebody in the subdivision went out there and literally ripped them up. And I understand that y'all have somebody that understand what a muffler is in your subdivision. <laughs> I haven't. And so that, I, we believe that was the person that, that did that. But anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there. I, I, hear, I hear you and I'll give you an answer. Give me a, two weeks. Yes, sir. And we'll get it done. Thank um, you. Like I'm just more concerned about life, that's all. And most of the people coming through your area, are they resident of that area or just newcomers in? It's both. So we so live people. right there. Um, as soon as you come in, we're like the, I believe, the fourth or fifth house that's on the left hand side, right before you start hitting into the curb. Okay. So you're Bob Hughes next door neighbor? Uh, yes. So yeah. is that a, is those. Yellow and black, uh, black and white street in the sign. There was a white and black speed limit sign, but it was taken. And I woke up the next morning and I'm like, well, where's our speed limit sign? The reason I said that because, uh, you know, the, the yellow and black sign, the warning sign said this is what you recommend to drive. But if you know the speed limit is 25 miles an hour, black and white, why could you have this to oh, somebody to monitor that? And write a few tickets. We can. Well, the sign's got to be in place. We can do that. Thank you. I think one of the things that, you know, we, we bought, I think we did now, uh, the little flashing signs. We had a part I, of one. I know the school got them. Now, where I was uh, located, <laughs> I used to still be able to place on the trailer. We got a trailer that's going to be placed on and it'd be drugged to different locations. Set up. And, and that would help. We couldn't leave them there permanently. You know, they would probably could be there a week or two or something because the other locations have the same problem all over the city of Session. And if, if you don't blame it, you just sit at my house for about five minutes, you think you're going to get run over. And the speed limit is 25 on the road and they're running 60. Right. But that's nothing uncommon. You're right. If we don't, you know, and, and it's posted, but it don't make no difference. People just want to be stubborn and stupid. So that that just the way it is. We hope we can we can get these flashing signs out at least. It will slow it down for a while, and then we have to go back and do it all over again. Thank you. Thank you. I will tell you something frustrating just to add insult to injury. We mowed Somerville Road today or yesterday, and I rode home today, and the side of the road was full of trash that hadn't been mowed. So it meant somebody throwed it out on a 24-hour period. I'm like, mm. wow. <laughs> it's unbelievable. At this time, I'd entertain a council member report. Does anybody have any council member report? Mm -hmm. Don't forget our rocking on the rails, August 22nd. No, August, April. April, same thing. It's uh, <laughs> April, April 22nd. Um, it'll be an all day event, barbecue cook off. If you think you can cook, um, come cook, get, in, get involved. I think we've vendored out. We've got we a have, back order. We have 55 vendors and a waiting list of about 10. We have a concert that's going to close the night out. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an exciting time here in the city of Smith Station. So I challenge you to, to put that on your calendar April 22nd, not August 22nd. I'll be the one to show. I'll probably show up in August too. So, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all so much. At this time, I recognize the media, CTV Bean, and uh, I'll give the credit to Melissa again tonight for being here. Uh, from CTV Bain. It's an honor and privilege. Uh, we grew up together. Oh, she did. She invited me to a Valentine's Day years ago. Oh. So at this yeah, time, I can entertain a motion that we'll be adjourned. Move that this meeting be adjourned. Second. Thank you.